Hi everyone, I'm Polly and this is Every Trick on the Hook. In this video, we will be learning how to make this 9 inch afghan square called Blizzard Warning. For this pattern, I've used worsted weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook. When I crochet, my tension is about a medium to loose. So if you tend to crochet on the loose side, you might want to consider using a five millimeter hook, but you should be okay with a five and a half. If you tend to crochet on the loop, on the tight side, you'll definitely want to use at least a five and a half millimeter hook. You want scissors because we're going to do a couple color changes. Um, that said, you'll want at least two colors of yarn, more if you like, a yarn needle for weaving in our ends, and six stitch markers. One of the rounds will be much easier if you have some stitch markers on hand. We will check our gauge after round four, so you'll also want to have a ruler on hand. And the last thing you'll need to be prepared is a little bit of knowledge of a couple techniques. The puff stitch in particular is one I recommend checking out. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel, Every Trick on the Hook. It will help you understand how to make puff stitch and maybe just how to make a puff stitch a little bit more easily. The other thing that you might want to consider learning is the magic circle. I use magic circles in all of my square patterns. It's not mandatory. You can use a chain loop and I do offer a chain loop as an option, but I love magic circles and I love double magic circles the most. And I do have a tutorial up for making a double magic circle, which is also on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested, check that out before we get into this pattern and see what you think. Now, I have also included PDF instructions on the pattern page on my blog. So if you like, I recommend printing those out. It's just one page. There's no pictures. It's just text. One page for the hexagon and one page for the square. In this video we're just doing the square but you'll need both pages and that might help you follow along because some of the stuff I have to move through the repeats pretty fast um, and that way when you pause the video you can refer to the printed document if you need to remember how many stitches there are or something like that. So without further ado we will get started right away on round one. We're going to begin by making a magic circle. I like to use a double magic circle. If you're not comfortable with a magic circle, you're welcome to chain four and slip stitch to the first chain to form a loop and then work your stitches into that. But I am using a magic circle, so first thing I'm going to do is secure this magic circle with a chain one and then get into my beginning puff stitch. Now, if you're using a magic circle, you're gonna find that the first step of a beginning puff stitch isn't entirely necessary. If you're using a chain loop, you're going to want to pull this loop that's on your hook up a little bit about double crochet height, and then proceed with your puff stitch. If you're using a magic circle like I am, you're gonna find that chain one that started your magic circle, that secured it, is almost enough to give you the height you need. So with that in mind, I'm going to continue with my beginning puff stitch by yarning over, inserting my hook into my magic circle, and drawing up a loop. I'm going to do that four times total, so yarn over, and insert and draw up a loop, that's two. Yarn over, insert my hook and draw up a loop, that's three. Yarn over, insert my hook, and draw up a loop. That's four. Then I'm going to yarn over and draw through all nine loops on my hook without getting caught, which can be tricky in a puff stitch. Here we go. And then I'm going to chain one to secure my puff stitch and create the eye of the puff stitch. That is your beginning puff stitch. Now, for the rest of round one, I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to make another puff stitch into my magic loop. So yarn over, insert and draw up a loop four times. Yarn over, 
drop a loop over three and four. That'll give me nine loops on my hook. Then I will yarn over and draw through all nine loops. Chain one to secure my puff stitch and then chain one more. So now I'm going to puff, chain one, four more times to get six total puff stitches on my magic circle. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six puff stitches, followed by chain one spaces. I am going to close my magic circle. And then I am going to slip stitch to the eye of this first puff stitch to close round one. And that's it, you have a nice little puffy flower for the center of your snowflake. Okay, for round two, the first thing you're going to do is insert your hook into the chain one space immediately after the puff where you joined and pull up a loop to make a slip stitch. And now we're going to work a beginning pico wide V, which is essentially a chain three, one, two, three, that counts as a double crochet, followed by a fourth chain, followed by a pico. A pico is chain three, one, two, three. If you're counting, we've made seven chains so far. But for our pico, we are going to slip stitch into the back loop of the third chain from our hook. You can get that back loop on there. And then a slip stitch. It's going to look like this. So there were seven chains and then a slip stitch into the third chain from our hook. They counted as a double crochet, a chain one, and then a pico. Now we're going to chain one more and we're going to double crochet in the same chain one space that we started in. Okay, and there is your beginning pico wide V. Now we're going to make some pico wide V's into each of the chain spaces around. We're going to skip the puff stitches and work just into the chain one spaces. So we'll start our next pico wide V with a double crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, oops, and then pico, which is one, two, three chains, and a slip stitch into the back bump of the third chain from our hook. Chain one more, and double crochet in the same chain one space. And there's our second pico wide V. Now we're going to make four more of those in each of the chain one spaces around. When you've made your last pico wide V, you're going to slip stitch to the third starting chain, which counts as the top of our double crochet that we started with. I like to slip under the back bump, but then come up over the top to slip stitch 
and that is chain um, that is round two we can fasten off for our two color version we'll be changing colors for round three so there is round two weave in your ends and then we'll move on to round three now we will move on to round three and we will start by making a standing single crochet in the first double crochet of any pico wide V. And what that means is this is a pico wide V. Here's the first double crochet and here's the second double crochet. So it's not the first double crochet in a set of two, but the first double crochet in a pico wide V. So you can pick any one you want and make a standing single crochet into that double crochet. Now we're going to make a treble crochet into the same chain one space that the pico wide V was made into and we're going to do that by working behind the pico wide V. So I'm going to take my hook behind the pico wide V and into this chain one space to make it a little easier, you can fold the pico wide V down and work into the chain one space, making sure that your treble falls between the two double crochet of the pico wide V. There you go. See how it's between the two double crochet and behind the pico wide V. Now chain three, one, two, three, and make another treble in the same place in the same chain one space. Just like that. Now we're not going to make any stitches into the next double crochet of this pico wide V. We're going to make a single crochet into the first double crochet of the next pico wide V. So not this one, but this one right here. Make a single crochet. And then we're going to continue by making a treble in the same chain one space as the next pico wide V, keeping our stitches behind the pico wide V and between the two double crochet. There's one treble, chain three, and another treble. Then we're going to single crochet in the first double crochet of the next pico wide V. And we're going to continue to work this way all the way around. When you reach the first single crochet that you started with, after you've made your last treble, slip stitch into that first single crochet and don't fasten off we're going to use the same round, the same, we're going to use the same yarn for round four. For round four, we're using the same yarn as before, so what we're going to do is chain one and single crochet in the same stitch that we joined. Like so. A chain one more and we're going to skip the next treble and work into the chain three space and we're going to make a pico fan which is a double crochet followed by a pico so chain one two three and then slip stitch into the back bump of that first chain be a little tricky. Try and be patient with it. Then double crochet and make another pico. One, two, three. Double crochet, make one more pico. One, two, three. Oops. 
and double crochet. And we'll stop and take a look at this. This is a pico fan, so we double crocheted, pico, double crochet, pico, double crochet, pico, double crochet. That's four double crochets and three picos in between. That was all made into the chain three space that sits between the trebles of round three. Now after you've made your pico fan, chain one, skip the next treble, and single crochet into the next single crochet. And we're going to work that way all the way around. Chain one, pico fan, so double crochet, pico, double crochet, pico, double crochet, third pico, and one more double crochet, chain one, and single crochet in the next single crochet. So do that all the way around. When you've made your last pico fan, and you chain one, slip stitch to the first single crochet that you made, and then you can fasten off. And that is through round four. Now at this point, I recommend you check your gauge. And the reason that I recommend that is because, well, it's just a good practice for one, but two, if you're making the blizzard warning afghan square, the nine inch square, it's not extremely forgiving in that last round. Um, it's not easy to adjust that last round to make it um, bigger or smaller. Um, bigger is not a problem. You can always add another round if you really need to, but smaller is definitely a problem for this one. You want to stay within the nine inches. Um, so after round four is the best place to check your gauge. And we're going to measure from the furthest point, so from this point to this point. And probably going to get about not quite five inches from point to point. I think in my pattern I said four and a half, and that's really sort of a conservative estimate. It's much closer to five. Four and a half is what you'll measure after you add additional rounds from point to point. Okay, so as long as you're within, say, four and three quarters, a little under five, you're probably going to be right on nine inches. If you're less than that, it's going to be smaller and it's very easy to add another round to make nine inches, but it's hard. But it's hard to take a round away to decrease to nine inches. So there you go. Check your gauge right now. See if you're on spot. If you are, we'll move on to round five. If you're making the two color version for round five, you'll want to switch back to color A. But for this video, I'm going to use a different color just to help differentiate the stitches. The first thing I want you to do is pick a side, any single crochet, and I want you to locate the treble crochet from round three that falls immediately after the single crochet and before the pico fan. This is the stitch I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna make a standing single crochet. If you don't like standing stitches, you're welcome to slip stitch to that stitch and chain three, um, but I like standing stitches, so what I'm going to do is make a standing double crochet into this treble, but I'm going to do it from underneath the chain one space and behind the stitches from round four. So I'm just going to stick my hook under the chain one space and I'm going to hook the top of the treble. And then I'm going to fold the stitches down and insert my hook and finish my standing double crochet like so. So the stitch falls behind the stitches from round four and 
under the chain one space into the treble. After that, I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to move to the center of the pico fan. I'm going to find the center, so the spot between the two middle double crochets. I'm just going to open this up a little bit. It will fall under the center pico. I'm going to take the pico directly below it from round two, and I'm going to push it through that center spot and pull it up through behind so it sticks out like that so that I can work into the pico. Now when you're working into a pico you don't want to work underneath it, you don't want to work too low, and you don't want to just grab a couple one or two loops from the top. You want to do your best to find the center of the pico and push your hook through that so it's really the center of a chain three loop and work into that spot. I'm going to make a double crochet into the center of that pico. See how nicely that lays? It's nice and straight. If you're in the wrong spot, you might find that your pico is a little lopsided or too stretched. It'll just look funny. If you get the center, it'll look nice and straight like that. Now after that, I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to double crochet in the next treble from round three under the chain one space to find the treble and hook the top. I'm going to fold this down and make a double crochet into that treble. Okay, now chain one and I'm going to double crochet in the next treble under the chain one space. And when I'm hooking the top of this treble, I'm not twisting it. I'm not coming in from behind. I'm still coming in from the front I'm just using the hook method to help me find my spot, fold down the stitches from round four, and then work into the treble. Now chain two, and find the center of the pico fan, push the pico from round two through the center of the pico fan, and make a double crochet into the very middle of the pico. chain two, double crochet in the next treble from round three, chain one, double crochet in the next treble from round three. So we're a little over halfway around and I'm going to show you how it looks. You can see your stitches from round five are just peeking through a little here, here, and here. They're really just building the structure that we're going to work upon in round six. I'm going to finish this and then show you how to finish round five. So chain two, push that pico through the center of the pico fan, make a double crochet into it, chain two, double crochet into the next treble, chain one, double crochet in the next treble, chain two, pico through the pico fan, double crochet into the pico, chain two, double crochet in that last treble, chain one, and slip stitch to the very first double crochet that we made. Don't fasten off though, we're going to use the same yarn for round six. For round six, we will continue with the same color, and the first thing we'll do is slip stitch into the chain two space immediately after the double crochet that we joined. Go ahead and fold down the pico fan so you can see the chain spaces that you'll be working into. We're going to skip all the stitches in round six and work just into the chain spaces. All right, after you've slip stitched into this chain two space, go ahead and chain four for a beginning V stitch, two, three, four, and then double crochet into the same 
chain two space. Then chain one and V stitch into the next chain two space. Just double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then chain one, and in the next chain one space, we're going to make a puff stitch, which is yarn over, insert your hook in the chain one space, pull up a loop four times. Yarn over, pull up a loop for two, yarn over, pull up a loop for three, yarn over, pull up a loop for four, yarn over and pull through all nine loops on your hook. Chain one to close your puff stitch and then continue with the pattern. Chain one and now V-stitch in the next chain two space. Chain one, V-stitch in the next chain two space. Chain one, and puff stitch in the next chain one space. Don't forget the chain one to close your puff stitch. Chain one more and V stitch in the next chain two space. Chain one and V stitch in the next chain two space. Chain one and puff stitch in the next chain one space. And continue like this all the way around. When you've made your last puff stitch and chain one, you'll want to slip stitch to the third starting chain which would be the top of what counts as your first double crochet to join and that is the end of round six. Don't fasten off yet, you'll want to use the same color for the next round. Round seven is a fairly simple round. It's basically a round of crochet. So we're going to start in our joining stitch by chaining one and single crocheting in the same chain that we joined in. Now we're going to single crochet in the next chain one space, single crochet in the next double crochet, and single crochet in the next chain one space. Now if you like to use stitch markers, I recommend putting one in that single crochet that we just made. So I'm going to put it right here. And what this is going to do is help us get our points straight later when we square this up. So that stitch marker went into the single crochet that was made into the chain one space between the two V stitches. Now single crochet in the next double crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space, and single crochet in the next double crochet. And now we're at the chain space before the puff stitch. Put two single crochets in that space. Skip the puff stitch and make two single crochets in the space after the puff stitch. And now it's just going to be one single crochet in each stitch and chain one space across to the next chain space before the puff stitch. So one single crochet in the double crochet, one in the chain one space, one in the double crochet, one in a chain one space, now this is the chain one space that's between the two V stitches. So if you want, stop, 
and put another stitch marker in that single crochet. And we'll use that later to help us align our points. Now single crochet in the next double crochet, single in the next chain one space, single in the next double crochet, and now we've reached the chain space right before the puff stitch, so two single crochets, skip the puff stitch, and two single crochets in the chain space after the puff stitch. And continue like this all the way around. When you come to the last puff stitch, do your two, puff, two single crochets into the chain space before the last puff stitch, two single crochets in the chain space after the last puff stitch, single crochet, I'm sorry, slip stitch to the first single crochet to join, and then fasten off. That is round seven, and we will be moving on to round eight where we'll go back to color B to finish up these points of the snowflake. Round A is another very simple round of single crochet, but we're also going to do some double crochet into the points of these Pico fans to make the points of the snowflake. So the first thing to do is pick any of your stitch markers. If you didn't use stitch markers, you're going to pick the single crochet that was made into the chain one space that sits between V stitches and you're going to make a standing single crochet into that stitch. I hate making stitches into stitch markers, but they are so handy. Okay, so standing single crochet into the same stitch as any of our stitch markers, or the single crochet made into the chain one space between V stitches. One single crochet into that stitch. Then we are going to double crochet into the center part of the center pico of the pico fan directly below, like so. Then continue by making a single crochet in the next single crochet. You're not going to skip a stitch behind that double crochet, and that's going to make our increases so that our circle keeps getting a little bit bigger. Now single crochet in each single crochet until your next, next stitch marker. That'll be a total of 11 single crochets. and the eleventh single crochet goes into the same stitch as the stitch marker. And now double crochet into the center pico of the pico fan directly below. And then don't skip any stitches, single crochet into the next single crochet from round 7, 11 single crochets total, to the next stitch marker, and continue this way all the way around. Now when you come back around and you've reached your first stitch, slip stitch to that single crochet to join. And this is where you'll have a decision to make if you want to um, continue with this color or move on to a different color. It's going to affect your um, the corners of your square. So we'll decide that in a minute. Before you move on, what I want you to do is double check your stitch count. This is an important round to do that. You should have 72 stitches total all the way around. You should have 11 single crochets in between double crochets. 
and that's important to help get your stitches and your points aligned perfectly straight. We're going to have the snowflake so that one point lines up perfectly with the middle of the top of our square and one point lines up perfectly with the middle of the bottom of our square. So if you're concerned about your points being straight, this is the appropriate time for you to stop and count your stitches and make sure that you have 72 all the way around, 11 single crochets in between each double crochet. Now for round nine, if you're doing the two color version and you want the corner pieces of snowflake to be the same color as the snowflake in the circle, you're going to keep the same color you used for round eight and use it for round nine. If you want the corner snowflake pieces to be the opposite color, now would be the time to change back to color A. Um, now round nine is also a very important round for getting your points of your snowflake to align correctly in your square. The first thing we'll do for round nine is chain one and single crochet in the joining stitch. That will be the first single crochet of round eight, which is immediately before the first point of the snowflake made by the DC, the double crochet in round eight. Now we'll double crochet, I'm sorry, we'll single crochet in the next stitch, the double crochet that forms the point of the snowflake, and we'll single crochet in the next stitch after that. Now we'll make three half double crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and we'll make one double crochet after that. One. Now we'll skip one stitch, and in the next stitch we'll make a V stitch, which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We'll do that again, we'll skip one stitch, and in the next stitch we'll make a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And one more time, skip one stitch, make a V stitch in the next stitch. And here is where you can tell that your alignment is correct and your stitch counts are correct because the next stitch after that third V will be the double crochet of the next point on your snowflake. You're going to skip that and make a double crochet in the single crochet after the point of the snowflake. Then make three half double crochets. One, two, three. Now make three single crochets. One, two, three. Make three more half double crochets. One, two, three, and make one double crochet. And again, if your alignment is correct, the next stitch will be the double crochet that forms the next point of your snowflake. We'll skip that stitch and make a V stitch into the next stitch. Skip one stitch, make another V in the stitch after that. Skip one stitch, make another V in the stitch after that. Skip one stitch and make a double crochet in the next stitch. Make three half double crochets. And now you're going to make three single crochets in the next three stitches. The first single crochet 
should be made into the stitch right before the point. The second single crochet should be made into the point itself. The third single crochet will be made into the stitch immediately after the point. Now make three half double crochets. One double crochet. Skip one stitch and make a V in the next stitch. Do that three times, so skip another stitch, make a V in the stitch after that. Skip one stitch, make another V in the next stitch after that. And that V should be made into the stitch immediately before the next point. Skip the point, double crochet in the stitch after that. The single crochet immediately after the point. And then half double crochet in the next three point, uh, the next three stitches. Single crochet in the next three stitches. Half double crochet in the next three stitches. And double crochet in the next stitch. This double crochet should fall in the stitch immediately before the point. Skip the point, V stitch in the next stitch. Skip the next stitch, V stitch in the stitch after that. One more time, skip the next stitch and V stitch in the stitch after that. Skip one more stitch, then double crochet in the next stitch. Make three half double crochets and those should be the last three stitches of the round. Slip stitch to the very first single crochet you made to join. Don't fasten off, we're going to use this color one more time when we make round 10. For round 10, start by chaining one and single crocheting in the same stitch as the join. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Half double crochet in the next two stitches. Now we're up to the V stitch from round nine. We're not going to work into the stitches part of the V stitches. We're only going to work into the chain one spaces. The first thing you're going to do is make a pico V, which is double crochet, pico, so chain one, two, three, slip stitch into the back bump, and double crochet, all into the chain space of the V. Now in the middle V, we're going to make a, P a treble pico fan, which is treble crochet, pico, treble crochet, pico, Treble crochet, one more pico, and one more treble crochet. And we'll stop and look at that. 
So here is your treble, pic treble pico fan. The treble crochet followed by a pico, by treble, pico, treble, pico, treble. Four trebles, three picos in between. After that, we're going to make a pico V into the next V stitch. So double crochet, one, two, three chains for the pico, slip stitch into the back bump, and one more double crochet into the same chain one space of the V. And that is our snowflake corner. Now, half double crochet, not into the stitches that are part of the V, but the next stitch, the next double crochet, the one that's made after this point of the snowflake. So half double crochet into that stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and now single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now work that way all the way around. Make your next four corners the same way. Pico V into a V, followed by the treble Pico fan into the next V, followed by the Pico V into the third V, then we had two half double crochets, followed by seven single crochets, followed by two more half double crochets. Work that way all the way around and then I'll show you how to join. When you get all the way around and you've done all four corners, make your last two half double crochets and your last two single crochets and then slip stitch to your first single crochet to join and fasten off and we'll be moving back to color A for the next rounds of our snowflake. For round 11, we're going to switch back to color A, and we're going to pick any side to start on. We're going to start in the stitch immediately after the last pico V of any corner. So here's my treble pico fan, and here's my pico V, and right after that is the half double crochet. We're going to start in that half do double crochet by making a standing single crochet. And now we're going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches. Your 10th stitch is going to be made into the last half double crochet of this side, immediately before the Pico V. Next, you're going to double crochet into the space between stitches in round 9. So now we're not working around 10 anymore, we're going to work in round 9. We're going to work between this double crochet of round 9 and this V stitch behind round 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip my hook under this space on the side of the Pico V. I'm going to hook around this space between the double crochet and the V. There's no chain space there, but I'm just going to work between those two stitches. Fold round 10 down so that I can see what I'm doing and make a double crochet. If I fold round 10 back up, it's going to look like this. Now I'm going to chain one, 
and I'm going to make a V stitch in between these two V stitches from round nine. So similar process, I'm going to stick my, insert my hook underneath this space between the Pico V and the treble Pico fan. I'm going to put my hook underneath that space, hook the space between the two V stitches from round nine, and make a V stitch into that space. So from the front, it's going to look like this. If I fold it down, we have a V-stitch. Now I'm going to chain three. I'm going to work another V-stitch between the next two V-stitches from round nine. So double crochet right here between these two V-stitches, keeping round 10 in front of my work. Lost that one. There we go. I have a V stitch made in between the two V stitches from round nine. Now chain one and double crochet on the other side of this V stitch before the double crochet from round nine and under these stitches from round ten, just like on the other side of the corner. I'm going to make a double crochet. This is what it looks like from the front. And then from the back, with round 10 folded down, we have a double crochet, chain one, V, chain three, V, chain one, double crochet. Now I'm working back into the stitches from round 10. I'm gonna start with the first half double crochet. So here is my uh, Pico V not working into that, I'm working into the half double crochet immediately after it. I'm going to single crochet into that, and I'm going to single crochet into the next 10 stitches, so that's 11 single crochets across. I'll work like this for each corner and each side across. When you've made your stitches all the way around for round 11, slip stitch to the first single crochet that you made, but don't fasten off. We're going to use the same color for round 12. We're going to start round 12 using the same color as we used in round 11. First chain one and single crochet and single crochet in the same chain, the same stitch as we joined. Single crochet in the next 11 stitches. The last stitch, stitch number 11, is going to fall in the double crochet that we made behind round 10 and into this space right here. So that's, that's single crochet number 11. Now we're going to make two half double crochets into the chain one space immediately after the double crochet we just single crocheted into. So two half double crochets into that chain one space. We're going to skip the double crochets that make up the V and work into the chain one space. We're going to make three double crochets into the chain one space of this V. And now we're going to work into the chain three space. We're going to make two trebles. We're going to chain two and make two more trebles. Now we're going to make three double crochets into the chain one space of the V. And then we're going to make two half double crochets into the chain one space after the V. One, 
two. And now we're going to skip the double crochet on this side and move on to the first single crochet of this round. We're going to single crochet in it. And we're going to single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches, so it's 12 stitches total after that. So you'll work like this all the way around. Let's reveal. Single crochets from the first single crochet through to the double crochet here. That's 12 per side. Two half double crochets in the chain one space. Three double crochets into the V stitch. Two trebles, chain two, two trebles into the chain three space. Three double crochets into the chain one space of the V. Two half double crochets into the chain one space after the V. Skip the double crochet on this side and single crochet into the first single crochet of the next side and single crochet across a total of 12 single crochets on this side. Work that way all the way around. When you get back to the beginning and you've made your last two half double crochets in this chain one space, remember you're skipping the first double crochet on the side, slip stitch to the first single crochet, and go ahead and fasten off. And that is round 12. For round 13, we're going back to color B, and I want you to pick any corner to start on. We're going to start with the very first treble of any corner, so it'll be the two trebles after the chain two space. We're going to standing single crochet into the first treble. And then we're going to single crochet into the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. Now what we're going to do is make a double crochet into the pico of the pico V directly below our work. Right into the center of the pico, make a double crochet. Now, back to the stitches from round 12, we're going to skip the half double crochet that falls behind the double crochet we just made, and we're going to make a single crochet in the next stitch, and we're going to keep single crocheting across a total of 14 times, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And now we're going to double crochet in the pico of the pico V directly below. We're going to skip the half double crochet that's now hidden behind this. And we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches, which will be the last five stitches of this side. Now to make the corner, make one single crochet in the chain two space, and now make a treble crochet into the center of, into the middle of the center pico of the tr pico treble fan. That's a treble crochet into the center pico to make our corner. Now make another single crochet into the chain two space. And that is one side for round 13. I'll go over it one more time, and then you can go and make your own round 13. 
So start with the first treble of the side, single crochet in the first five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. Make a double crochet into the pico of the pico V. Skip the stitch behind that. Make 14 single crochets. Make a double crochet into the pico of this pico V. Skip the stitch behind it. Make five more single crochets into the last five stitches of this side. Make a single crochet into the chain two space. Make a treble crochet into the center pico of this pico fan and make one more single crochet into the chain two space. Then repeat that on each side. When you get back around to the beginning and you've made your final corner, slip stitch to the first single crochet to join. And now I'm going to continue with color B for our final round, but if you want to use a different color, you are welcome to. And we will move on to round 14. Round 14 is very simple. Just go ahead and chain one and single crochet in the first stitch to start yourself off and then single crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the next corner and you come upon the treble, make a single crochet into the treble chain two and single crochet in the treble again to make your corner and then continue to single crochet across and make each corner the same way. When you come to the beginning slip stitch to your first single crochet to join and fasten off. Well everyone, that is that. I hope you enjoyed making Blizzard Warning, and I hope you found the tutorial helpful. I'm Polly, you've been watching Every Trick on the Hook. Please visit me at everytrickonthehook.com or Every Trick on the Hook at Facebook. Stop by Ravelry and say hi to Polly Plum, and leave a picture of your completed Blizzard Warning. Thanks for watching.